Well, welcome to Zen Live and Ideas That Can Change Your World. See, I remembered to turn my little reminder on. And uh, so let's see, what's, what can we work with today? And I'll, I'll pick up with last night's t uh, Martini Time talk, which you can go back and watch on my website, To Kill a Minotaur, or on my Facebook status. But I was talking about and inquiring into uh, the search for the Father and how we create surrogate fathers uh, to fill in the blanks that our biological father didn't fill in. And so, uh, and I and I talked about several surrogate fathers in my life where, uh, where who provided unconditional love. We we were talking about unconditional love is what we're all seeking because unconditional love is a space in which we're not judged. It is, is a space in which we're not guilty. It is a space in which there is no shame. So it's a magical space. It's a creative space. It's a space where we find wholeness and we stop seeking. So this whole idea of uh, seeking the Father, uh, seeking wholeness, uh, seeking completion to escape the guilt of being incomplete uh, is basically what our culture is crea it works on. That's the operating system of our culture. So we've been trying to, at least I have, <clears throat> been trying to get a, uh, a wide-angle view of our personal search for completion and our cultural search for completion. So when Trump says, let's make America great again, that's the search for completion. But it assumes we're not great. It assumes there's something wrong. It assumes that we're incomplete. And there's an inherent guilt in being incomplete, in being unfinished, in, in being I'm uh, missing something. And uh, I know I grew up with, with my father with, uh, and here's his picture. Uh, of course, the, uh, yeah, okay, here he is. I love, this is my favorite picture. You see that little picture of him? Uh, that was just a uh, little picture taken of him at sea. That's his winter uniform. He spent his whole life at sea. And uh, he's looking at me. <laughs> and he's looking at me. He's got a little bit of a smile on his lips there. But uh, he's kind of looking at me, uh, waiting to see if I'm going to measure up. You know, so I, I so, uh, you know, so my relationship with him went through uh, many stages, <clears throat> just as our relationship with the world goes through different stages. Um, and they're really the same, but one's interior and one's exterior. You know, the father, the father's role, basically, is to take the child uh, from childhood and introduce him into adulthood. So he's the threshold guardian. Uh, just like in Indian mythology, that that fat little elephant god is a threshold guardian. Uh, the guru is a threshold guardian. Uh, the threshold guardian is, <clears throat> is, a, is a dragon, uh, uh, Yahweh in Genesis put two cherubs at the threshold to the gar to the paradise uh, threshold guardian. You got to get through the threshold guardian. If you're not ready, he's going to put his hand up and says, you're not ready. Charlie, you can't go to the tuna factory. You're not ready. And so that, so that just creates, well, I, what do I have to do to get ready? I, I got to do more yoga. I got to do, I uh, got to go to college. I got to do all this stuff to get ready so I can get to the tuna factory, you see. So it's kind of like you're not ready yet. Uh, but then the other one is that the father is either blocking you because you're not ready yet. And so uh, this creates more striving or he's a guide. He takes, he walks with you into the new world and, and, and uh, guides you without judging. So I described my first real father uh, last night, who was my Uncle Robbie, and I went to live in, uh, in Aretha, my mother's older sister. I went to live with them while my father was in uh, looking, uh, the, he was in transition and they were moving to New Jersey, but I lived with them for six months. And uh, this was the first experience in my and being in sixth grade that's when you really need a guide because that's when you're leaving childhood and entering into adolescence and and uh, you're entering into culture 
see, childhood is not in culture in the sense that it's in its own world, self-contained, it's in its own being. But then, 9, 10, 11, 12, there's a transition and the child has to have an initiation. He has to, he has to leave the mother, he has to leave the childhood and the mythological world of the child and go into the semantic language of culture. He has to enter into culture, which is a language system. It's all built of language and thought and logic, you see. And so culture is kind of like another womb. There's the womb of the childhood. Well, first there's, well, look at, you know, the Russian nesting dolls. Uh, I love, I have to go buy, I got to buy one of those if I can find it. Um, uh, but the Russian nesting doll is a series of mothers. You know, you open up one, there's another, boom, 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 boom. A series of wombs. So the first womb is, of course, the womb inside the mother. And then the second womb is the, the, the stages of childhood, from infancy uh, to the nursing baby up into uh, the toddler, the three or four year old, the childhood and the development of the brain. And then the child is ready for the next womb which is culture. Culture is a womb, and then every society has is its own womb. But we think that's the end of it. We think that's the end. That's the final womb. No. There's another one. <laughs> we have to get born again, Christian religion. You got to get born again. Well, well, you have to get born out of culture, not into another form of culture, which is what we do. In other words, we well, I got to get out of this. So well, it's we we like our birth, our rebirth, and our rebirth is always horizontal within the womb of culture. So if you get reborn into a religion, like and you get Jesus and everything, you're still in the same culture, because religion is within our culture. So this whole getting out of culture is basically the job of the father. The, the true guide, the, the true uh, spiritual guide, which would, you could say would be the Father, would be one who takes you through all of the different wombs until the final birth, which in spiritual traditions you could say would be awakening or enlightenment, which would be the end of anxiety. So the final birth, when, we draw, when we're born out of culture, Buddha calls it the cessation of suffering. His Four Noble Truths were basically how to get out of culture, <laughs> how to get out of suffering, because culture is, creates anxiety, it creates guilt, it creates shame, it creates conflict, it creates the uh, feeling of never arriving, it's always tomorrow. The new Apple iPhone came out, now everybody's saying, oh my God, tomorrow has come, finally, the final product. Well, there'll be an Apple 11, <laughs> and that will be, here's the, here's, the Apple 10 is obsolete, Apple 11, or, you know, whatever, iPhone 11, you see. So it's always one, you know, this, we think we've arrived, no, the next new thing comes, then we have to get rid of that, and we have to get born into another product. It's endless, as long as you stay within the realm of culture. So we're kind of like, I guess what we're, we're looking at here today is the uh, eternal father. Is the, uh, there's no words for it, I'm just kind of playing, I'm just trying to search for it. You could say spiritual father. But then this, see, this, this eternal father, universal father, mythic father, you see, takes the form of all of our different fathers. So it's kind of like personalized, this, this eternal father, you could say God, I don't care, this eternal father personalizes himself in our different stages of birth. When we need that father, that father comes. When we need the teacher, the teacher comes. Whatever we need at our particular point, the teacher will appear. And I'm using the word father as a metaphor for this guide, this threshold guide that takes us into the next womb or birth our world, you see. So you could look at the world, look at our life evolutionary as the Russian nesting dolls. 
going from the physical womb to the infant toddler to the uh, uh, childhood, to the early childhood, to the later childhood, to the adolescent, and then into adulthood, and then beyond that. It doesn't stop there, but our culture says, whoa, that's it. Uh, this is the last ferry boat, <laughs> you're not, and you're not getting off this one, you see. So culture is kind of like that ferry boat that promises you the other shore, but it never lands. It just keeps going around and around and around in the harbor. It never gets to the other shore. And you can't get off the ferry boat in a group. You can't get off the ferry boat uh, in a crowd, you see. The only way off is alone and by yourself. So this is why very few people make the final journey, because you have to go alone, you see. And this really is the path of Buddhism and Zen. It's a solitary path. Uh, it's, it's the path of the, and Joseph Campbell mapped this out in the uh, uh, journey of the hero. Uh, the journey of the hero is a solitary journey in which you see the, the, the limitations of culture. You see that culture creates its own suffering. And so you begin to be curious, and then you realize that your mind is culture. You see, when we are, uh, at, you know, when we're adolescents, we identify with culture, and we become culture. So every one of us is like a, uh, well, like this, uh, this uh, cell phone here, you see. This cell phone has the whole internet on it. This acorn has the whole oak tree on it, you see. This brain here has the whole culture on it. Every cell has the whole organism in it. This is a single cell, a single acorn of the whole internet oak tree. Infinite, infinite worlds, you see, each reflecting the other. And every cell phone is the center. So the center is everywhere, you see. So every cell phone is the center of the universe. And that's why I say, when I begin, usually is, is you are the world and the world is you. you I, here at Blackstone, this is the center of the world. You are the center of the world. But this is kind of like a metaphor for the computer and for our mind, you see. So our individual consciousness, we think, is a thing in itself. But our individual mind and consciousness is part of this internet, this culture, in the same way that this little cell phone here is, is the whole internet, except you get to choose what on this infinite world to look at, you see. But you only do that because the whole thing is inside. So the whole culture is inside, the whole culture is inside you, <coughs> inside me, but we don't see that anymore that when you start choosing what to look at on your cell phone or computer, you don't see the whole internet at once, you only see what you select. So then I think, well, I've got free will. I can see, I can do what I want, you see, but I'm only doing it within the context of what's given, and that's the internet. So in our culture, we think we've got all this free choice, but we're only choosing what's given within the context of cult culture. And this is interesting. This is interesting. Now the, 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 uh, the, op, the, the computer is a binary system of 0 and 1. So it's either you got, you got this either or, okay? Choice. Choose this or that, 0, 1. The whole, now I'm not a mathematician, but my understanding is that the whole computer system is operated up on this on or off. The light is either on or off, and you can create a whole world out of that binary, it's called a binary system. Well, culture is a binary system, it's called duality. Duality. So everything comes in a choice, either or. That's it. <laughs> Even our politics, either liberal or conservative. Everything gets down to that, you see. If you watch the movie Hurt Locker, that was all about this. The Hurt Locker uh, hero was a bomb 
deconstructor, and when he was in Iraq, his choice was down to either I blow up or I don't when he's putting a wire together. Life and death. Either I blow up, either I die, or I live. And then he, he comes into America and he goes to the supermarket and he can't make a choice because there's a whole canyon full of cereal. So the choice is, you know, but that's culture. That's culture. So culture, we could say, is a womb. And the Father, the Eternal Father, the Universal Father, as the guide, guides us through. So we may think my biological father uh, didn't do his job. He was always gone, and he was always disapproving, so he wasn't, he failed, <laughs> you see. But no, he was doing his job. All fathers are aspects of the universal father, and they, they do what they're, what's given, what they, would, they do whatever they can with what's given to them. But, they are, but our biological fathers are basically the transmission of culture. They give us culture. It's through our biological father that we're introduced to the culture. And if the culture is split, well then the father is going to be split too. So he's going to deliver us exactly the culture that he's embodied, you see. And so then the son becomes a man in the culture and he's divided into either or. But what we're searching for is unconditionality. You see, the choice here is either or. That's conditioned. Either you're good or you're bad. Now, which one are you going to be? Well, most sons will say, well, I'll be a good son, and I'm going to father in the path of, I'm going to follow in the path of you, Dad, and I'm going to take over your business, and you're going to pat me on the shoulder, and you're going to hand me the sword uh, when you get old, and you'll take over from me. So that's one choice. The other one is, well, who am, if I just become like you, who am I? How am I going to be a unique person? How can I be the unique one if I just become like you? So I'm going to rebel. So I'm going to choose the other one, you see. So you choose the good side, I'll choose, I'll choose to be a rebel, to be unique. I'll go my own way. That's what society tells me to do. Follow your own path, you know. So that right there is, is the introduction to either or. And whichever one you choose, you're screwed. <laughs> you see, it's a lose-lose situation because you always end up with two. But what we really want is the one. What we really want is unconditional love. And unconditional love says, I don't care what you choose, you're okay. You see? Unconditioned means I love you or accept you whether you're either or, whether you're good or bad, whether you're up or down, whether you're in or out. I embrace you. You're okay. And that opens up learning, of course, because you can't learn when you're being judged. So when you are, when you become when you fall into this unconditional love of the Father, wherever that happens, see, it probably won't happen with the biological Father because he's introducing you to culture, and culture operates on the binary system of either or. It's duality. It's going to create hope or fear. I hope I'm doing right. I'm afraid I'm doing wrong, you see. That's all. The choice always has an implication that you're going to screw up. You, it's like in Indiana Jones when you are choose the Holy Grail and he says choose wisely and the Nazi chooses wrongly and blows up. You see, I do that when I give away my martini glasses. I always tell them one of them is the Holy Grail, so choose wisely. <laughs> you see, so this is the, the double bind, the lose-lose of culture. You can't choose wisely because both choices are mutually dependent. You can't separate them. If you choose one, it implies the other. If you choose the other, it implies the other. So they're both mutually dependent. So they're not, they're conditional. So this, but the pain of this, you see, the pain of duality drives us to discover unconditionality. And that intent to find unconditionality creates 
the fathers, the surrogate fathers, and the teachers. It creates what we need in order to move to the next level of our evolution. We create the conditions, just like the, the uh, uh, nature creates the conditions for its own growth. It's all one interrelated, unconditional field. But our culture sees that it's two. Well, my bell rang, so we'll stop here and maybe pick it up at martini time. So thanks for dropping in.